When strung together creates a magnificent garland. This garland is called Mala. Let me show you how to make it today. Hi everybody, my name is Dave here with Dreams by Dave. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a carnation mala. Now the materials needed today is a upholstery needle. As you can see this needle is much 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 bigger than the average needle. And then I tied it with some butcher's twine. These are linked in the bio below. Now the carnations that I'm using today are the big carnations. Uh, these you can buy at any local floral shop and also you can pick any colors that you have that you would like. Here we have orange, white and some fuchsia. So for this mala I basically made a two yard length. You can tell the yards by your shoulder length uh, and tied it to the upholstery needle. After you finish completing that you just want to make sure that your workspace is nice and clean and I separated my flowers. Now this is the way how you're able to create beautiful, beautiful, even malas because the colors you have to count them out. So I'm counting four of the pink, four, four, and four. Now I'm laying it out in the sense that this is the way how the mala would look. After that, I tend to play around with colors, play around with different varieties of um, shapes and styles of the mala. So here I have four oranges that I'm going to place in the middle in between the two purple and another four oranges that I'm going to be placing in between the two of the fuchsias. And the last four, I'm going to leave it right in the center. That is going to be the pendant, the pendant of where both ends of the flowers connect. Here I have bunched off two whites. So I'm going to add the two whites in between the pink and the orange. That is going to be the connectors or basically the bands. I always like to have the malas in the sense that the colors aren't alternating one after each other, but alternating in sections. Alternating in sections allow you to be able to visualize and see the mala right away without any confusion. So once we have this set, you want to make sure anytime making malas that all the flowers are facing up meaning all of the flowers should look something like this so here we're going to go ahead take our needle and don't be scared the reason why i recommend these needles is because when inserting the flower into it it is almost like a shish kebab effect that you're able to bring through the face of the flower out through the back and then I pinch and just simply stuff it into each other because you don't want to see the green. The greenery inside of the flowers, yes, it looks nice, but in this mala, we want to keep it very, very tight. So another thing that I do is I like to open the flowers a little bit as you go because sometimes fresh carnations are always tight. So as you can see, I'm just going ahead and following my lineup. Having that create, creating that lineup that what we did with the count allows you to just make malas easy breezy without even having to think. Once I have it on here, I'm going to now push it down onto the string. All right, we're going to sit, and as you can see, it's already taking shape. We're going to go ahead and continue with the white, and once again, through the front, and squish it in. Through the front, out the back, squish it in through the front, out the back, and squish it in. As you can see, this other hand here is holding the needle and the flowers together, so you have a firm grip. Now, here we have it, one side. When you bring it down, you just wanna make sure you're stuffing them back in, and here we have one side of the model created. Now, for that amazing pendant, as you can see, we were firstly pushing it through like this, now for the pendant, we're going to push it through the flower sideways. So we're going to continue making it sideways. Now, when you put it through sideways, you're going to end up having flowers like this. What I want you to do is now tilt the needle and bring it around. Now go ahead, tilt the needle and bring it around, tilt the needle and bring it around. What you just created is 
a full north, south, east, west of a flower connector that is now in the middle as the pendant. From here now, we're going to work on the next side. So in the beginning, we had did going through the front and through the back. But now, in order to make sure that our flowers are all facing up, we're going to do the opposite way on the opposite side, which is taking it through the back and out through the front. Once again, I'm just passing it through the needle and then just stuffing it very gently into the other flower. We're going to then pull that down, making sure it's tight and connected to the pendant. And now we're going to start on our oranges. Like you see, guys, if you don't count it out and you don't lay the mala out, you're going to constantly be thinking every strand, how am I going to do this? Where am I going to go? What's going to happen? Now, this, allow, this needle allows your malas to be very, very straight and even because you're able to work with it. The smaller needles doesn't give you that much of a chance. So here we're going to have the last two flowers. And we're just going to go ahead, pass it right down, get your handy dandy scissors cut. And before we tie it, I just like to go back and make sure that everything is connected and stuffed in. The pendant, we want to make sure that it's nicely fluffed. You want to make sure that you can fluff your flowers. If it tears a little bit, it's fine. Afterwards, we're going to take this two ends. And I'm just going to do a double knot or a single knot. And here we have it, our first mala made out of carnations. Now, wasn't that carnation mala easy to make? So, as you guys know, in many weddings, they have the beautiful rose mala. Now, today, I'm going to show you guys on the second mala how to make a rose mala. So, once again, we're going to start off with our upholstery needle and our butcher's twine. And we're going to do, again, the two-yard. Now here I separate it like we're supposed to um, by five. But since when we only have one standard color, we're just gonna make one line. One line of it because we're just creating one standard mala. Now, once again, always remember, flowers must be faced up. Now, the problem with rose malas is that if you hold it wrong, they're gonna break apart. So I tend to like to hold the roses by right above the stem. Holding it right above the stem, but then placing your pressure points on the middle of your finger, and we're gonna insert through the front, then turn and hold the end, and bring it right into the string. We don't wanna keep it on a needle too long, because when we keep it on a needle too long, then it tends to break. Now, when you reach that end part, the stem part, it is very tough. So you have to put a little bit of pressure, but you're putting the pressure onto the stem and not onto the flowers, petals itself. So through the middle and out the back. As you guys can see, when I cut the flowers, I left just the hard part of the, um, the stem. So we're going to continue. Now, don't be afraid when the flower breaks. The only way to know the pressure point of the flower is when it breaks. Uh, it does take a lot of experience, but one, two, three malas in, you're a professional. So as you can see, naturally, it's creating the shape. So I have here two dozen roses. Now, roses you can buy at any standard market, even your grocery store. And I choose red today, because red is my favorite color, but you can alternate, you can do patterns like this, you can do any style, any color, it is up to you. So here we have the one side created, and I just want to just push it down a little bit, and I have five flowers here left back. I'm only going to use three for the pendant, because I want to keep two aside just in case any accidents happen. Once again, we're going to pass through the middle, but as you can see, I'm not using the stem. I'm going directly through the flower. So, when going directly through the flower, we have all equal three. And then, when we reach to this point, I want to just go ahead, 
pass the needle through and make a knot. Now making a knot like this and then pulling it makes the roses into a three point star. So once we do that, we want to then cluster back, pull this, and then cluster these other roses to the center. So here now we're going to start the other side. Like you remember, we have to go from the bottom up. Now I don't always go through exactly here because it is kind of harder and chances of you breaking the flower is much more higher. So I go right under and kind of angle it out. Because no matter what, the roses is not like the carnations. It naturally sits evenly on top of each other. So we're just going to continue on making and stitching through, through the bottom, out the top, through the bottom, out the top, and through the bottom, out the top. And here we have our last two. And last one once again, we're just going to right under and right through the middle. And handy dandy scissors. And we just want to make sure everything is even, all of the flowers, and we're going to tie it off once again, like we did the first mala. Around, loop-de-loop, -loop, right through, and pull. And here you have it, a rose mala. See guys, that's getting easier and easier. So for this mala, we have the beautiful small carnations. For the small carnations, I didn't even count it out. I know two bunches is roughly around 35 to 40. And what we're going to be doing in the last video, I showed you guys that we're going through the face and out the back, or through the back, out the face. But for this one, we're going to turn the flower on its side. And we're going to go right in. So, as you can see, I'm rotating the needle. And we're going north, east, south, west, and we're basically creating a circle of flowers. So as you can see, we're just going top, left, right, and bottom. And as you're just continuously turning the needle around and just filling the next gap, the next space. And we're just going to continue this. You can, by all means, use any different other color. You can even create, like how we did this beautiful carnation mala earlier, a color, com color combination, but that anything that involves a color combination, you will have to count them out. Now, as you can see, bringing the flowers to the front and creating this entire circle effect that is just so much more different because it's just more neat. So these DIY tutorials are here for all of the regular and basic things that we always see in our childhood or among our religion or culture that is brought to you. And just remember anything that you guys want, any type of ideas or styles that you would like me to try, don't forget to comment below and also follow on Instagram Dreams by Day, follow on Instagram, Shakti Man Returns for Fitness, follow on Instagram, J. Kali Bhawani for all the religious looks. We have reached a nice length of the mala, and we're just going to go ahead and tie it off, and take our handy dandy scissors, trim the edge, and, and there we have it, our small carnation mala, and our beautiful rose mala and our beautiful stacked big carnation mala. Three beautiful malas that can be used for endless amount of things. Join me next time on DIY with Dave.